friends for the last two weeks uh, bhopal had not had a good shower and i think your presence here has provided us that good omen and as your panel discussion was going on there was uh, a huge uh, thunder outside so i thought there was thunder within the building and also thunder outside the building uh, here there was a thunder of ideas and there uh, it was nature's thunder that was uh, evident to all of us uh, i must mention that our ac is started working so it will take a few minutes to cool the whole room uh, we have had a power breakdown so we are now on a generator and this is the only building in the campus where the ac is working we have got all the other acs to be stopped so that this one can work friends when the organizers of this session asked me uh, which session i would like to involve myself with directly uh, without even a moment's hesitation i said this is the session i would like to be part of and as the chair this is the insurance i'm taking as i start as the chair i will not take more than 4 minutes and my entire 4 minutes is not for the topic but for the speaker of today's topic now how do i introduce um, arora sir do i introduce him as my teacher do i introduce him as somebody who i know from 1974 onwards as the principal of my school so you can imagine i am talking of a period of 48 years ago 48 years ago i was privileged to have him as the principal of my school i was in 9th grade then we both happened to be in kabul afghanistan then and he was the principal of the school and i have no shadow of doubt in my mind that my classmates who are all in touch with each other today all of us believe that we owe our whatever little professional success we have had and the personal fulfillment we have had in terms of our lives to our teachers who taught us then and more specifically to principal arora who led us then i still remember and that is something sir i follow i still remember as principal he used to take 2 hours of class every day and he used to tell us everything else can wait my class has to go on he was a brilliant teacher and is a brilliant teacher of mathematics and he used to continue to teach even after he became the principal of the school and sir that is something many of your students are following when i was at jain as the pro vice chancellor i used to take 8 hours of class per week and now in jagran also i try to take at least 4 hours of classes per week because and you set the ground for all of us saying an administrator need not separate themselves from teaching that it is when you interact with students in the class you are able to be an able administrator of an institution that lesson many of us learned from the leadership that you provided uh i still remember a small incident relating to arora sir uh during my entire school days i had never got the privilege of coming first in my class i always came second in my class i didn't come third also i came second in my class always and the last i remember 11th standard board exam those days 11th we were the last batch of 11th standard pass out 11th standard internal final exam i looked at the notice board and it was second and somebody asked me from behind so sandeep again you came second i turned around he was behind me i said yes sir what to do come come to my office he took me to the office and told me a story he said there was a gardener whose garden was up the hill and he had to take water from down to the top and he had two pots and one top pot was a little old so it had holes in it 
and the pot is believed to have told the owner, give me up because half of me gets empty by the time I go up. And I believe the gardener said, no, I will use you. And he turned around when he reached the top and told the pot, look at the road which you walked on. It is full of flowers. The other road is empty. I knew that you leak little by little, so I put seeds on that path so that the flowers come up. And uh, Aurora sir's message to me was, there is a joy, purpose, meaning in coming second also. And sir, I remember that even today. Many years later, I think it was sometime in 1990, no, even later, 2004, Aurora sir somehow got my number. And he called up my office and told my secretary, don't tell him who is on the line. Connect me straight to him. And hearing sir's commanding voice, my secretary had no choice but to do that. And his first question to me, Sandeep, do you know who is speaking? Now, I had reached a stage in my life and only my mother called me like that. And so I knew it is somebody like him. And I said, sir, I can recognize your voice. And then he said, Sandeep, did you finally come first in the class? I said, yes, sir. In my post-graduation, I came first in my class, but I didn't know how to contact you and tell you. So I'm telling it to you. I told him that. A last episode. Now, sir has had, has worked in Sonawar School, in many institutions, Sainik School, Kabul for seven years, and after that, FEJ institutions for nearly 23 years. I remember after that, when he was working as vice president of a school trust, he had put me on the board. And I happened to go for a board meeting, and I was sitting with him in his office. And I still remember the famous cricketer who passed away recently. Madan Lal was also a member of that board. So I hope you remember that incident. Madan Lal came to the room, I was there, he was there. And Madan Lal asked him a question which I was very curious to ask, but no guts to ask him. The question was a simple question, which Madan Lal asked him. Sir, when are you going to retire? Uh, this was around three, four years ago. And I was very curious to hear the answer. Sir gave an answer which I'll never forget. Sir said, retire? When have I started working? I have been learning all this time. I've never worked at all. So when I have not worked at all, there is no question of retiring was his answer. And that's the spirit of the person that we have today. And sir, it's truly a honor for all of us to have us here. I was looking for an opportunity to get him offline to our institution. And sir, for all, from all your students, the paths we walk, the journeys we took, the achievements we had, a lot of it has to do with what you have done for all of us. Uh, I request now, this is the only time as a chair I can request him something. Sir, I request you to take half an hour. And then remain in half an hour, let us have a discussion with the audience. Would that be okay with you, sir? <laughs> Come, sir. Professor Sandeep Shastri, the Vice Chancellor, and my dear colleagues. He has put a little thick layer of butter on me, and therefore your expectation becomes more from me. I have been given a chance to speak after lunch. And that lunch was also sumptuous lunch. And I know when you have a heavy lunch, you begin to feel sleepy. <laughs> Friends, if you remember when the last speaker was speaking here, I raised my hand and I requested him to speak louder. But he could not speak louder, he carried on. But I will not let you sleep. I will keep talking loudly. But the, another disadvantage in speaking in the afternoon is that in the morning, whatever has to be said at a conference 
has already been said. Whatever I have to say has at least been spoken, if not in detail, but nevertheless, I'll go over some of the things which I have prepared. My work is not original. It is only it will come from my experience. As I was listening to speakers and the panelists here, I was feeling a little nervous. Nervous because I found that they were very intelligent. They were able to coordinate very well. They were able to convey very well. I am not that good a speaker that I can put those things so forcefully. However, I begin this, or my little preparation which I have done for this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, on the 5th of September, which is just about five days back, it was Teacher's Day, and Prime Minister Modi spoke while giving awards to teachers. He spoke on something, and out of that, three, four lines I have extracted, and I'll speak to you, and that will sum up the two-day conference, whatever has been spoken, and whatever I am going to speak is all summarized in three, four sentences, or four or five words only. And he spoke, he is going to open 14,500 uh, Shri, Prime Minister Shri schools. And the aim of those schools will be, and listen to these words, will be more exper experiential, holistic, integrated, play-based, inquiry-driven, discovery-oriented, learner-centric, discussion-based, flexible, and enjoyable. Is anything left in this transformation? Everything has been said. Though I am not a great fan of Modi, but I think in this particular thing, I do appreciate that he has spoken, summarized it so well, the two-day conference which was yet to come. I begin, friends, my aim in coming here is to share my experiences. Most of you are more knowledgeable than I am. I am standing here just to share my experiences of five decades in educational administration. When I am in the presence of educators, I feel that I am in heaven. So I now standing here, I am not standing on earth, I am standing in heaven. The first slide, please. I have come here to make you feel like this. Be joyful. This is just uh, taken from the net somewhere. Principal and overjoyed with something, maybe making some announcement. Friends, principal's job is dreadfully difficult. And can you all hear me? Yes, Audible, even at, up to the end here, and loud enough? Yes, Nobody will complain that I spoke uh, very softly? No. no. Good. It's a dreadfully difficult and very demanding job. Many principals have mentioned they have to fight on many fronts. And what are those fronts? Parents, staff, local police, politicians, media, judiciary, health department, and finally, RTE, right to education. That also creates problems. People come. Well-to-do people come and pretend that they are not so well, well off, and apply for admission. So RT is another field where the principal has to fight. This reminds me of a little anecdote. A principal died and went and knocked at the gates of heaven. God from inside asked, 
who is it? He said, I am principal so and so. He said, come in, come in quickly. You have had plenty of hell on earth. <laughs> Friends, look at other professions. A soldier has a gun as his tool. Next slide, please. Principal's tools. Soldier has a gun. Policeman has a agenda. A judge has a force of law. And, a, and this is a challenge for me. <laughs> I have the light, but I can't see your faces. And without seeing your faces, I shall pause. Though the vice chancellor assured that all other AC is off, and uh, power will come here, but I was going to say something, but I change, I compliment him. <laughs> All right, so judge has the force of law with him, but what does a teacher have or a principal have? Only the power of the pen, and pen is mightier than the sword. Your gestures, your facial expression, does the trick, whether it is a parent, whether it's a student, whether it's a staff member, the principal's facial expression does the trick. So that is the tool of the principal, the pen, and the facial expression. I said the job is difficult. The president of USA, the prime minister of India, prime ministers of many countries, they have the choice of changing their team, but the principal is stuck with the team. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Even to turn out, to dismiss one teacher, it takes a long time, long procedure also, you are all faced with. So principal cannot change the team. The only recourse open to the principal is, what is the course, recourse open? Change. To change. You change, train. train him, not change him, train him. If you change him, how do you know that the next person will be better than this? So therefore, the role of the principal comes in just to train him, not change him. I now will show you a slide, and when you examine the teachers, please examine on these four quadrants which I have made. Next slide, please. No choice, next, yes. There are four quadrants. It's a skill wheel grid. What is the first one? Would somebody read, please? Poor will, poor skill, not worth having. Next, second quadrant. Strong skill, poor will, not worth having. Third quadrant. Weak skill, strong. I don't mind having such a teacher because you can train him. But the best teacher, when you are assessing the teachers, please see how many of strong them will strong will and strong skill. skill. This is the skill will grid, which I have been applying to my teachers. And my effort has been, in these 50 years, if I can bring all my teachers to the fourth quadrant, slowly and gradually. Not that I have not sacked teachers, I have sacked teachers, certainly. Those who are completely uh, unmoldable, we have uh, done that also. Sometimes uh, the weeds have to be taken out. But generally speaking, I have tried to convert into strong will and strong skill. Friends, so far the speakers have spoken. Nobody has asked you to do anything. I am going to ask you 
on your right pads or somewhere or at least in your mind. Please write down quickly within one or two minutes, why did you join the teaching profession? Next slide, please. Yes. My voice is loud enough. For this hall, it is loud enough. Satisfied principle. Why did you join the teaching profession? Please write down quickly. Or in your mind you think. And I am going to ask Professor Sandeep Shastri asked me to speak for 30 minutes and make it more interactive. I told him I will be asking many questions. So it will become interactive. All right, anybody speaks any one point, please? Anybody raise your hands? Yes, please, yes. I have not intentionally chosen the profession, so it was the profession who had chosen me. Yes. And uh, I had a strong will to perform, perform whatever I am doing. And then skill was honed through the journey. And I think I fell by chance, but I fell into the right place. Very good. Very good. Clap for her. Anyone else, please? Yeah. I wanted to become an army officer. Yes. In spite of getting selected and everything, my father didn't allow. <laughs> so uh, he wanted to be an IAS. He wanted me to, be, to become an IAS, IAS officer. Yes. I put my foot down. I said, no, I don't want to be a puppet. I will create puppets and I will uh, create the, <laughs> the ones who move those puppets around. Ah, the one who moves the puppets, you, make, you will make those people. <laughs> Not the puppets, the, the one who moves the puppets. Yes. There are many puppets to be moved. So let the, our students uh, become those who move the puppets. Okay. Anyone else, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. That, okay, that lady, please. Sir, I actually chose it by choice, I would say by, that. By choice, very the good. The moment I finished my English honors, I entered uh, CIE Delhi University. Yes. And uh, my inspiration was actually my English professor, Dr. Broti Viswas. And I chose it because I wanted to be, th to be with young people throughout life, young learners. Uh, because of maybe a very good student and teacher relationship, I would say that. It was a great learning experience for me. So I thought to take it forward as a very career good. option. So you took it by choice. Yes, I, I took it by she, choice. She deserves it. And I'm very happy about it. Yes. In spite of being a principal in almost 23 years of my life in this, I am very happy. The and I feel myself very fortunate that I've been chosen for this role. The fact that you have survived 23 years. <laughs> compliments to you. Yes, please, quickly. Yeah. Ju just one second. My session will progress like this. <laughs> then you will give me more than half an hour. <laughs> Just that is how my session will progress. Yeah, uh, sir, a bit different. No, no. Please. When I was in school, sir, I was a very shy type of a student. I was not really very good in certain subjects. And uh, during that time, my grandfather being into this profession, I would watch him, how he would groom his students who were not doing well, right? He would take the uh, extra classes. He would say that I don't want to train, I don't want to give tuitions to the students who are doing very well. Yeah. I want to master the minds who are not doing well. And in school also, when I saw these things around my teachers, that they would always say, Ki aap, you don't know how to, uh, to calculate, so it is better you sit at the back. 
so that always it was it became you know it, uh, it was in my system it started ki why why they are not giving me a chance to do that so eventually over the period of time influenced by my grandfather's way of teaching i chose this profession very good shall we class yes please I wanted to become an actor, a dancer, a singer, everything but a teacher. I landed up becoming a teacher and I became an actor, a dancer, a singer yeah. and everything else. Like Amir Khan in Tare Zameen Par. Exactly sir, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'll just uh, mention to you, Sandeep sir, perhaps forgot. Sir, my goal was to become an engineer to fulfill my parents' dream. But unfortunately, I lost my parents after 12th. So one of my teachers suggested me, you can do something more better than this. So I have selected my coaching field. And I have created more than 7,000 engineers in India right now. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Thank you, sir. By the way, this Tare Zameepar came up. I would like to share with you. Do you remember the mother of the child? And she happens to be my daughter. <laughs> Friends, over a long period, it has been my desire to make a definition of education. To define education, no perfect definition was avail available to me. So over the years, I have made a definition of education, which you will see on the slide now. Read it and try to improve upon it and see if possible, implement that in your schools. Next slide, please. Definition of education. I want somebody to read, who can read loudly. Yes, anybody can read. Madam, you have had a chance, we we'll give a chance to somebody else to speak. Sorry, disappointed. As a, as a good classroom, everybody should get a chance. Yeah, good afternoon to all. Definition of education. Yes. Education is that which teachers want to think and question. Slowly, think and Question. Question, yes. Assess and analyze. Assess and analyze. analyze. To be willing to, to e examine and even fearlessly challenge the existing, existing knowledge. knowledge. Fearlessly challenge the existing Sing knowledge. knowledge. Yes. Lot of wrong knowledge is there. So from a critical angle. Correct. Yes, please. please. It empowers and liberates an individual by honoring curiosity Removal of ignorance and freedom from bondage. Freedom from bondage. Bondage yeah. to what? Bondage to what? All kinds of things, religious yes. and rituals and rituals, all kind of bondages. Yes. To make them free from bondages, let them think for them themselves. Whatever path they want to follow, let them follow that path. Correct. Yes. It helps in internalizing values. values. Hold on. Values are so important. You all know what values I am talking about. Yes. Let, the ch let the children internalize uh, those values Correct. so that they don't become sociopaths later in life. They become good citizens. So let them internalize the values. Make I would like to mention to you, make a culture in the school. Dishonesty has to be discarded. Honesty, integrity, all these things to be put into the culture of the school. And anybody who does something wrong, the whole school will castigate that person and bring him round or bring her round to that particular culture of the school. All things, transformation and everything will come, which is a big high sounding word here. 
transforming and all that, everything will be transformed if you make the child proper, groom the child properly in our schools. Yes, please. Absolutely correct. It enables human beings to... fosters the habit. No, it enables... Yeah, it enables... Human hum beings to sort out grain from chaff. Yeah. Let them leave the rubbish. Let them gain from the school what matters really in life. At this moment, I would like to mention, friends, you may, some of you may not agree with me, I don't think subjects are that important. What is important is, is the child. We are not teaching maths, English, French, and German, or social studies. We are teaching the child. We are teaching the child, the whole child. That is what we are doing. And if we forget about new educational scheme or old educational scheme, if we are teaching the whole child, the world will become all right. Correct. Yes, please. It fosters the habit to be critical, to empathize, to... To empathize. To hypothize. To, to hypothize. In to inquire, generate, generate questions. Yeah and find answers to them. To them. This yes. is the definition which I have framed over a number of years. If you have something to add, please uh, add to this uh, definition. But I have done my best in uh, sharing with you what I thought in these 50 years, the definition of education. And this is what I have been doing in the schools I have headed for the last 50 years, over 50 years. Total my experience is in education is above 60 years. I started in the year 1961 at uh, a school called Rashtriya Indian Military College Dehradun, RMC, yes. From RIMC, then I went to Senek School, Kapurthala. From there, I went to England, taught there for three years, came back, went to Lawrence School, Snar, seven years as a housemaster. From there, I went to India School, Kabul, as the principal, and ever since 1974, I have been the principal or the vice chairman. So that's uh, my history. Thirty-three and a half years. <laughs> Strange? Yeah. Uh, uh, do your maths, but let me tell you, since you have asked the question, it will be self-praise. I was selected out of 500 applications. <laughs> so this is just for information. And you may ask me, how do I know that there were 500 applications? <laughs> yes, when I became the principal, the interview was held in the CBSE chairman's office, director of education, one professor of education from CIE, and the chairman of CBSE, they were the interviewing committee. And when, the, when I became the principal, I, when I went there, all 500 applications came to me, and I saw that there were 500 applications. And would you believe, this is again self-boasting, but facts will remain, my own principal had also applied. <laughs> All right. Friends, to begin with, I said that it's a very demanding job. But those who have joined the profession willingly not by the process of elimination, or those who came into it and started liking it. It is a great pleasure, it's a privilege to be an educator. The type of satisfaction it gives, in fact, I ask all of you that why did you choose this profession? I chose this profession that I could the teacher teaches, only, the only the teaching profession teaches the live material. Rest of the professions, they deal with material things. Only teaching profession deals with 
living things and uh, we make the nation. All engineers, doctors, all have been made by the teachers and teacher is only an acharya but here are sitting pradhanacharyas. So, so it's a great privilege to be a teacher. Next slide please. And whichever office I have occupied in my life, I have put Dr. Radha Krishna's photograph on my head, just above my head, to draw inspiration from a great teacher whose uh, birthday we celebrate as a teacher's day. So it, my ideal ha has been Dr. Radha Krishnan, among other things, other people also, but one of them, great admirer I am of Dr. Radha Krishnan, a great teacher. Next slide, please. I am standing here to make you realize that how great you are. Though it's a demanding job, but we are playing, performing a great role in the country, in the world. I am considering all the teachers of the world. It's a privilege to be an educator. An engineer makes a few roads or houses, architect plans a few houses, but a teacher, a principal touches the eternity. Generations to come are touched. We have made one student, you can see, and there were uh, five, six hundred students in that school. All are doing exceedingly well. You can see how one student is touching the lives of uh, thousands. How many are there in your un university? More than 4,000 students he is touching as the vice principal. So our influence goes to eternity. That's what we, you and we are. Sci Times of India. About 10 years back, a survey was conducted by Times of India about various professions. And as I told you that I have come here to tell you how exalted positions you hold or we hold. The result of the survey was it is the fourth worthiest profession in the country. Second most honest profession in the country. Contributes the most to society. Even though not so well paid, yet the least corrupt profession in the country. That was a survey conducted by the Times of India. You may not have read it, but I kept, kept the cutting with me. And that is what you and I are that uh, the most uh, honest uh, profession, the least corrupt pro profession. There may be some, mostly in government schools, but in private schools where I have been the principal or vice chairman, zero corruption. If you, some of you are thinking of donation and all that, I don't go into that donation for admissions, but otherwise, it's the least corrupt uh, profession. Somebody in the previous session mentioned guru. I come to that also. Next slide, please. Most of you must be knowing this. The etymology of uh, guru. Gu means darkness and ru means to dispel. So what are we? We are dispellers of? darkness. Somebody mentioned, who mentioned in the previous, you mentioned? I think we clapped for her, she knew it beforehand. And I was wondering at that time that in my talk also it comes. Okay. No, 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 no. My, my slide was with me, no one else saw the slides. Huh. Think alike. This is a great thing. Dispeller of darkness. I mentioned previously, Acharya gives only Shiksha. Pradhanacharya also gives us Shiksha, but you are more than Pradhanacharya. Huh. But I am going beyond Acharya. I am going beyond pr Pradhanacharya. I am going to Guru. The Rishi Munis of the Yor, they used to not only give uh, Shiksha, they 
help the evolving souls. So that is our role to help the evolving souls. They are very innocent in the school. In the school, that is our job to help the evolving souls to go to a greater uh, uh, soul liberation from bondage and from ev everything. Yes. The next slide, please. I'll tell you. Acharya, Guru, next slide. Now see the beautiful combination. What's the meaning of Vidyarthi? Vidya is knowledge and Arthi means seeker. So here is a, here are the students who are seekers and here is the guru wanting to give knowledge and help the evolving soul. So a deadly combination. Where are we going wrong? We are not going wrong anywhere if we are performing our duty well as it is, as it stands, thinking ourselves to be a guru. Next, please. As I told you that I am standing here to tell you the exalted position you hold. What is it? Boulder? So, uh, this I will explain to you. You may not have come across this thing. Some of you may have. Supposing there is a big stone, a boulder, lying by the roadside. Nobody notices cars pass by. Pedestrians also pass by. But a sculptor comes with his chisel and he starts chiseling. Then when he started chiseling, there only some people stop. Okay, what is he doing? Then what happens? When it is fully chiseled, it has taken shape shape of a god, deity. Then many stop and see, oh, he has made this. But then we don't stop here. Then after some time, when the fully trash ho gai murti, with great veneration, they take it to a temple. And once it is installed in the temple, it becomes God. Ladies and gentlemen, you were installed as a teacher, then you became Pradhanacharya, the principal, the guru. Look at the exalted position you hold. You are next to God. What more are we looking for? What new education policies or what transformation? If this transformation comes, everything will take care of itself. What was our position in the old times? Uh, next slide, please. Our traditions, ashrams of yore. Lord Rama had his guru. Who are, what are the names? Vashisht and Vishwametra. Lord Krishna. Sandeepni. So that was uh, the role given and in Rajat Maharajas, they would never take a decision without consulting the Rajguru. So that is what we are. We are the descendants of those people. We are the principals. We are the Pradhanacharyas. We are more than that. We are gurus, equivalent to that. Just for your information, friends, you hold such exalted position. Whenever you go anywhere, your work is done in a jiffy. I have had this experience number of times. I have gone to income tax offices. The income tax officer happens to be my student. Or electricity office, some problem is there, happens to be my student. And he says, you go and your work is done. I give you an experience from my life. I was the principal of APJ School Noida. The affiliation with CBSE was to be obtained. I went to Lucknow to get the no objection certificate. You all know that we had to take. I went to the secretary of education who was a parent of a school where I was the principal. I went and gave the application to him. He said, Mr. Rora, you go back. Go to Noida. 
and you will get the no objection certificate. Lo and behold, within a week, the no objection certificate came and my job was done. So that is the exalted position you hold. Either the students have become big persons or their parents, but your work has never been held. It, uh, it is uh, done. Even if they are not your students as soon as they come to know. In, in India, teachers still enjoy, the principal still enjoys a uh, very high position. It's not so in UK and USA, but in India, the position is still very high. Next slide, please. Hindu iconography. Anybody who can tell me the meaning of the word iconography? Anybody? Any hands up, please? Yes. He becomes a uh, legendary figure for us, and uh, we idealize him. We idealize. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else? Icons. Yes. Iconography means the study of icons, the images, study of images. So if you see the three-headed god, Dattatreya, have you heard the name? Dattatreya, do you know the story of Dattatreya also? Who knows the story? Anybody who knows? No? I'll tell you quickly. Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. They wanted to test the chastity of Ansuya. Yeah. She was the wife of uh, Rishi Atri. They came there and asked for arms, bhiksha. She said, yes, what do you want? I'll give you. They said, whatever we are going to ask, but you will, you will have to give us in the naked shape. You should be naked in giving that. She said, there is no problem. I'll give you in my naked position. With her powers, she made them small babies and gave the bhiksha. Then a child was born to them with the qualities of Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. And that was the Dattatreya. And friends, I will share with you wherever I have been the principal to the staff room Instead of giving the name staff room, I have given the name Dattatreya Vas. That teachers, those who live, sit here, they have the qualities of Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. That's the name I have given to the staff room. I'm only telling you, sharing with you, my experiences of uh, the last 50 years. That's all, nothing else. Mine is not any original research work or anything. This is what I have experienced and I am sharing with you. Next slide, please. I will ask you a question. Put your uh, right hand on your heart. Put your right hand on your heart, which is on the left hand side, and tell me honestly, how many of you are putting in your 100% potential, 100%. Or your teachers, more so your teachers, principals, I can still believe. But tell me, are your teachers putting in their 100% potential? What is the answer? No. no. Therefore, what is our duty? Our duty is to keep the person sitting here. I think, uh, what's your name? Victor. Victor said 99 degree, it is still hot water. Am I right? And one degree makes a difference. Even if you are failing, the, perhaps the teacher has reached that point of becoming an evolved soul, a committed teacher, just a little bit more effort. The only thing I would say, one of the mottos, the school I worked at, at Lawrence School, SNAR, the motto was never give up. So please don't give up. Perhaps that one degree is left for the teacher to be turned into a committed, dedicated teacher. So it happens and 
It is with pleasure that I share with you that I have converted many, many teachers, many, many students into good citizens, good teachers. <laughs> About potential, I don't know whether it is on the, it is there on the slide. Unused potential decays. It will decay. Next slide. Unused talent diminishes. Unused money devalues. Uh, <laughs> yes. In many cases, money must have gone waste also. In my case, 4,000 rupees went waste. They were lying in my briefcase, and they remained there without my knowing. And after three, four years, when I was just sorting out my briefcase, 4,000 rupees came, so they went waste. But only 4,000 I was saved. Unused time dies. These are important things if you think about them. What is not used is abused, is abused. Use it or you will lose it. Use it or you will lose it. Therefore, friends, next slide, please. Awaken the dormant potential within you and make an effort to awaken in the teachers also. How much time? Five minutes? What do the principals feel? How much time should I take? <laughs> shall I listen to shall I listen to the Vice Chancellor? You will agree with me. You will agree with me the instructions you gave it should be interactive. Is it interactive? Good. So I'll take more than five minutes. What are the ex what are the expect expectations? I think one slide is missing. What are your expectations from the teachers and the students? Is this slide there or not? No. Pardon? See, Dave Raza, I'll come to that later. Your expectations from students and teachers. What are your expectations? I'll ask two, three of you. Anybody who has not spoken? What are your, anybody here? What are your, your expectations from your parents? Yes. Yes. Anyone else, please? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, with the yellow sari, please. Yes. Sir, so I want, I, my expectation from my teachers is just to, uh, you know, prepare the children to know what is right and wrong and how they're going to face the challenges, any kind of challenges and problem solving that is going to come their way. And I want to create children. My expectation from the children is that they become problem solvers. Will I sit down? Good. Will I be right in saying that you, are, you want a designer child and a designer teacher? <laughs> yes? Designing that is our desire? Pardon? Designing and shaping their lives. Uh, as we say, designer sari, designer <laughs> necktie. You want a designer student and a designer teacher. But sir, before all, we want them to be wonderful human beings. Yes. That's the most key key thing I think that the world See, needs today. Once you are a good human being, I think you can do it all and you can justify everything designer, that you do. Designer has all these meanings in it. Ideal. Ideal. Right. But have you ever thought what are their expectations from the guru?
they also are looking for a designer principal. Please remember, they are also looking for a designer principal. And what is uh, contained in that designer principle? I will list a few qualities. Please tell me if you don't agree with me. First quality which comes to my mind, not only in education line, but corporate or any kind of industry, anywhere, this quality must be there. And the first quality is integrity integrity and what is integrity next slide no, this will come later it doesn't matter integrity refers to a quality of the character it refers to the wholeness intactness and purity of thought and action it is primarily a former relation to oneself. You are not answerable to anybody. There was some discussion about conscience in the morning. You are answerable to your own conscience. And if you have answered your if you have answered your conscience, then don't feel guilty. The transformation has taken place. Next. No, I think there is some. What number is it? This will come later. No, these are not the quality. Pardon? 27, Samdarshi. Yes. Come now. The next quality is, first is integrity, and I have told you what is integrity. It's a relationship to oneself, to your own conscience. Second quality I feel in a designer principle is samdarshi. That means treat everybody equally. equally. Most of the principles have favorite teachers. They become favorites what to do, but you have to resist the temptation of uh, making a favorable teacher. Those who do a lot of work for you, they run around. People begin to say that uh, she is a favorite of uh, the principal. But treat the other person also equally, some darshi. Satya darshi, I need not explain, truthful. Para darshi, transparent, transparent. Honest in dealings, don't rule by divide and rule, which the British have used to do. Don't play tricks with them. They judge. They know the principal is uh, playing tricks with us. Or uh, We have to be 100% honest, complete integrity, and treat everybody equally, and be transparent. Then we are designer. Uh, Principle, there are one or two more qualities. Dur Darshi, visionary, foresightedness, farsightedness, vision. The principal must know where her school or his school is going. Is it only for academic gain? There are a number of people who can lead the school and first phase, BTS, Arthipuram. You have to decide 
which direction your school is taking. Is it in sports? Is it in academics? Is it in uh, literary activities? Is it in debate? Or, or overall? Holistic. holistic. Modi said holistic, I read in the beginning. Holistic. So that is the development. All the designer principles should be doing that. The other sheet. Be liked by everybody. Be liked by everybody. And when will this happen? When all these above qualities are there in the principle. Good communicator. If you are little dilly-dallying in your uh, communication, if you are not clear yourself, then work will not be done to your satisfaction because you are not clear in your own head. So you have to be 100% clear in your own head. Then the instructions will be clear and that job will be done to your satisfaction and you will not be like that principal who was sitting like this. Just to remind you of some good communications, Nehru was a good communicator. Long years ago, he made a tryst with destiny. Do you remember this? It was a stirring speech. Churchill, we shall fight on the roads, we shall fight on the sea, we shall fight on the mountains, but we shall not surrender. Very stirring speech again, and people were moved. These are uh, good communicators. Mark Anthony of Julius Caesar. How many of you are uh, English uh, teachers, English, uh, or ha have read uh, Julius Caesar? Mark Anthony. Friends, uh, friends, Roman countrymen, I come here to bury Caesar, not to praise him. What marvelous words and audience was affected to us. Or Vivekanan, sisters and brothers of America, straight away the audience changed. J.F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what your country can do for you. These are some important extracts which I have taken from uh, good communication to communicate well. More than communication. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next. Next. No, leave it then, I think. Uh, I'll come to that only. Good listener. Hmm? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, leave it. More than good communicator, you have to be a good listener. And not only a listener, but the person is speaking. Most of the time people come to you, come to us. Other qualities will also come to you. You will become the other sheep. You will be liked by. Half the steam goes when you listen to parents or to the teachers. Half the trouble is over already that I have told the principal. Principal knows she will do something or he will do something. One last point I'll mention, friends. This is a very, very
best results, what should we do as principals? Give credit where it is due. Praise often. Encourage. Be kind and considerate to teachers and students. Be flexible. Little bit flexibility you can exercise. Encourage creativity. Arouse and satisfy curiosity of children and of the staff. That is how learning takes place. Give chance to learn and grow. Teachers feel extremely happy if they see on their hair that they are learning something new and they are growing. They, have, they also want to become like principal or principal. So they should have a feeling that they are growing, they are learning more, and they are becoming capable of uh, rising in life. <coughs> so help them to grow. As a, as a teacher, There are many things, but then I am bound by friends because of paucity of time. I will quickly go over my notes. I will give you five E's. See the slide, five E's, nine, nine E's. Not five, but nine E's. See that? For best results below that. doesn't matter. I'll read them to you and if you wish to note down, you may note down. I started I started with five E's and over the years I added four more for complete progress of the teachers and of the students. What are those nine E's? I am going to read it to you. Number one, engage. Engage the students, engage the staff. Give everybody some work. Enable them. If they are faltering somewhere, enable them, help them. Encourage. Expand their knowledge, students and teachers. Give them some challenging work to children as well as to staff. Enhance, energize, empower, enthuse, and then finally, dear friends, then expect from them. Then expect results from them and you will see that uh, you will succeed. These nine E's have been my guiding principle. Has everybody got these nine E's? The slide did not come. No? Eight? Okay. Okay, I'll read once again quickly. En engage, engage, enable, encourage, expand, enhance, energize, empower, enthuse, and finally, I said, expect from them. You will get the best results. Uh, yes, certainly, tell me. I, I, I am standing here to learn from you. Friends, I will give you the names of some books which you can read to your benefit. Yeah, and you may have read also some of these books, but these are my favorite books. I have read with great advantage to myself. To serve with love, 
we are great way to serve with love. See the movie also. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. To serve, to serve with love, number one. Number two, goodbye, Mr. Chips. Goodbye, Mr. Chips by James Hilton. This is about a teacher. The first one is also about a teacher. Third book, Jonathan Siegel. Very inspiring book. One of the most inspiring books I have read in my life. Jonathan Siegel, Richard Bach, by Richard Bach, B-A-C-H. 101 essays by Education World magazine. 101 essays by Education World, it's a magazine. Some of you must be getting in the schools. They have published this book. Educational Landscape. Educational Landscape, this was published by NPSC, National Progressive Schools Conference, of which once I was the chairman. 101 Essays Education World, Educational Landscape, NPSC, You Can Win by Shiv Khera. And then finally, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, Stephen Covey. Friends, I have many more slides, but I'll stop in the, after the next slide. How to make great teachers? And who are great teachers? And what can you do to make great teachers? Please bring that slide in. What is the heading? Since there's a shortage of time, I'll quickly read through. I have uh, distinguished between ordinary teachers and great teachers so that you make an effort to make great teachers. Ordinary teachers are less tolerant to students' errors, believe in reprimand and punishment. Great teachers guide students' learning, assess students' capabilities, and provide feedback. Ordinary teacher, teacher-centric. Teacher is important. But great teacher, child is important, child-centric. Create a psychological barrier between themselves and the students. This is ordinary teacher. But great teachers don't do that. They engage students in tasks to which they relate, develop fresh insights, and teach them self-regulation. Are these things written there? Can you read? Or is it too far from you? I am talking both with physically and psychologically also. Is it too far from you? No? All right. Distance-wise it may be, but psychologically, no. Do I need to read or you are reading? You are reading, read. All right, I'll finish with the next slide. Imagine yourself retired. Has it come? Yes. yes. Maybe it's retiring. What would you like your head boy and head girl to talk about you? And what would you like a chairman of the Rising Commission to talk about you? 20 years hence. Retiring, what would you like uh, your chairman and 
I can imagine them saying that we will not miss you. You have set up a school which will run perfectly well. We will not miss you. We will not miss you. The school will run perfectly well. Yes. Because you. Sir, I want to retire like Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Azad on the stage only. Friends, since there is no time, I have been asked to conclude. I will conclude my answer. What is my answer? What the chairman should speak about me? That Mr. Arora produced inspired souls. Mr. Arora believed in and practiced learning to learn. Mr. Arora generated an indomitable spirit in students and staff. Mr. Arora was of impeccable character. He was a man of complete integrity. He believed in just he believed in and practiced justice and fair play. His life was guided by principles. He was propelled by higher goals. He was internally driven by his own GPS system. <laughs> Friends, Quoting lines from Shakespeare's Hamlet. Listen to these lines carefully. Everybody may not have heard. Most may have heard. Shakespeare's Hamlet, these are gems of wisdom. And what are they? They were spoken by Polonius to his son Lartus when he was leaving him. He was going on a journey. This above all, this above all to thine own self be true. This above all to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. If you are true to yourself, you can't be false to anybody. If, if principles are of that kind, then then no transformation is needed. It is already transformed. And finally, I close with an Urdu couplet. Mitado apni hasti ko. Do you understand? Mitado apni hasti ko. That means shed off your ego. Mitado apni hasti ko agar kuch martaba chahiye. Martaba means position. Mitado apni hasti ko agar kuch martaba chahiye. के दाना खाक में मिलकर गुले गुलजार होता है। थैंक यू एंड जय हिंद। I think the spontaneity of my audience was reflected. I was actually wanting to tell everybody to stand to give him a ovation but then even before that I think the spirit with which he spoke the energy with which he said what he said and the sincerity with which the words came out uh, I've never had a more difficult task in my life managing a session uh, like I've had today because you had to manage the session of your teacher and therefore stopping was out of question but then uh, somewhere the break had to be applied because we have a session that is coming after. But sir, I think everybody here for many more days and possibly years to come would remember the way you engaged all of us, the anecdotes which came, the small messages that came. 
I think everybody has something to carry away from this workshop and I'd like to thank you for that. On behalf of the organizers, uh, of course, all of us are totally incapable and incompetent to give you anything as a token, even as a token of respect. But then from our side, uh, a small token to you for the time that you spent with all of us here. And it's truly been an honor to have you with us here. So today. Thank you so much, sir. Now we have with us Samyak and Nikhil who will speak about Ignited Intellectuals. Uh, they aim to empower students and educators and help them develop future ready skills. They are creating an ecosystem of skill based learning and introducing new technology concepts in the field of education to give way to a new era of growth and productivity. So I hand over the mic to Samyak and Nikhil.
What's that? Um, yes, we had asked. Uh, if it's possible. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Sir, the clicker and your name. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. The new education policy will make way for learning with critical thinking along with discovery-based, discussion-based, and analysis-based learning. The NEP 2020 infers learning should be holistic, integrated, enjoyable, and engaging. In this session, we will be discussing about the need and importance of new age education and ways to integrate new age education in schools. So the children entering education in 2022 will be young adults in 2034. Schools need to prepare students for jobs that have not yet been created, for technologies that have not yet been invented, to solve problems that have not yet been anticipated. As education institutions, we need to address two far-reaching questions. One, what knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values will today's students need to thrive and shape their world? And how can educational institutes provide students with these knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values effectively? To address these questions, we at Ignited Intellectual are working towards integrating emerging technologies in school education with our open innovation labs, integrating vocational skills education in schools with our language labs, and integrating 21st century skill building for school students with our 21st century skills lab. Our open innovation lab encourages children to become active learners by helping them develop skills that will help them become able leaders, innovators, and problem solvers for better tomorrow. Establishing this unique lab in school helps to create and nurture an ecosystem of learning by doing. With a focus on experiential learning, the Open Innovation Lab provides a hands-on approach to students to learn, experiment, design, create, and even integrate the new emerging technologies to bring innovative ideas to life. The Open Innovation Lab includes a 3D printing workstation, a CNC woodwork lab, robotics garage, multimedia studio, and a visual design studio. Each of these labs within the Innovation Lab have a comprehensive curriculum and lesson plans to facilitate effective learning for students. Let's look at the Innovation Lab in more detail. The 3D printing workstation enables students to design and print anything using 3D printers. The CNC Woodwork Lab enables students to design and craft wood using CNC machines. The Robotics Garage provides students with access to all necessary tools and robotic kits. The Multimedia Studio enables students to work on professional level audio and video projects utilizing audio and video recording equipment. And finally, within the Open Innovation Lab, the Visual Design Studio equips students with knowledge of 2D, 3D animation, graphics design, UI, UX design, and web designing. Our next lab, the Language Lab, focuses on integrating vocational education for schools by preparing students for a successful career. Ignited Intellectual, in partnership with Cambridge Assessment English, offer training and assessments for school students. Well-researched curriculum and assessments developed by Cambridge English, part of Cambridge University, focus on functional reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills. Cambridge certifications, which are valid for life, are accepted and valued globally by schools, universities, and organizations, enhancing students' academic and career prospects. And now I would like to invite Mr. Sam Samyak Chakravarti, founder of x Labs, to speak about the 21st Century Skills Lab. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikhil, for the uh, time to speak about what we're doing. Now, before I speak about the lab, um, I want each one of you to imagine that we're in 2035 and 2035 and um, you all are very excited uh, one morning because you've been invited to attend, to, to visit a corporate 
uh, tower where some of the leading companies are working out of. You know, as a teacher, you've been invited to see. And you're very excited and eager to find your students sitting on a desk, sitting in a cabin, because you've taught them. And you've put your, you know, enthusiasm, energy, integrity, like sir said, and all of it. So you're wanting to see your students excel in that corporate setup. So you enter the office with a lot of enthusiasm. But you get shocked because you don't find humans. You find robots. You find algorithms. And you're like, where are my students? There's one human somewhere sitting in the corner. So you go there and say, you know, I'm a teacher. You invited me to see how the world of work is evolving. But where are humans? Last I remembered, I didn't teach these robots. And then that one person sitting in one corner cabin says that all the road tasks have been replaced. So any task where there is certainty, where A will lead to B will lead to C will lead to D, now can be programmed. So now we don't need humans who actually operate like robots. We, for that we have robots. And we hire very few humans who are able to think, act, solve in uncertainty. Where sometimes D comes before A, those tasks are now for humans. And they are sitting somewhere on a beach working remotely. Because that's the way the world is going to move forward. Now let's come back to 2022. It's a fact, teachers, that everything we thought about the role of education, the role of knowledge is changing. Today, the brain can no longer be a hard disk, which is just take knowledge, take knowledge, take knowledge. Today, the brain has to be a processor, which is leverage knowledge, apply intuition, apply creativity, in order to think sharply, solve smartly, and communicate powerfully. Because that's something that still robots cannot do. And hopefully they will not be able to do. Otherwise, then this whole question of why do humans exist if everything robots will do. So why I am here today is to ensure that your students, the ones that you put so much heart and soul behind and more importantly students who come with so many aspirations, so many dreams, their jobs, their careers are not sabotaged by algorithms. Very casually speaking, in the age of artificial intelligence, a human's natural intelligence is going to become the greatest qualification, which is your creativity, your emotional intelligence, your problem solving skills like a teacher, they very rightly said. That is going to be what is required. Now, science suggests that the foundation for such skills or abilities or behaviors or attitudes, whatever you may call them, is best laid at a young age, which is essentially from ninth grade onwards. So while I'm not saying suddenly replace physics with uh, emotional intelligence, but you need to teach emotional intelligence and critical thinking and problem solving along with physics, math, etc. You as teachers, I, I, I'm much younger to you, by the way, and, and I'm, 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 so I'm no one to tell you what to do. I need to learn from you. But my request before I just quickly speak about the program is my request is please inculcate amongst your students and more importantly amongst parents that don't push your child to give the next uh, entrance exam and just focus on that. You know, go to tuition class with that dhola barke bag and then like, you know, give up life and don't watch anything, don't do anything else, just just uh, live in a quota factory, for lack of a better word. Encourage them to become thinkers, feelers. Encourage them to experiment and fail, because that is what makes us humans. From the mindset that took us from Flintstones to nuclear bombs, is the mindset which the world of work now wants. Because frankly speaking today, whether you like it or not, most students go to school to get into a good college, they go to good college to get a good job. At the end of the day, that is the journey, whether we like it or not, whether it's right or wrong, that's a different debate. But 8 out of 10 students learn to earn. And the only way they'll be able to earn and continue to grow is if they start applying their mind, which is where we come in. So um, I, run a, I run a company called Experience Skills Lab, where we have built something called the Workverse, 
which is the world's first soft skills training and assessment simulation. Because the fact of the matter is skills like problem solving, collaboration, entrepreneurship, uh, emotional intelligence cannot be taught. Like you can't sit in a classroom or watch a lecture and suddenly become emotionally intelligent. Or as I always say, all wives would have sent their husbands to that course. But you cannot become emotionally intelligent just by watching a video, right? So what we've done is, we've built this workforce where students assume the role of a, of a strategy associate in a fictitious company. And they're actually solving problems, they are playing office politics, they are dealing with a boss, they are pitching to a client, they are pitching to an investor, they're negotiating with vendors, everything that you essentially do at the workplace. Uh, these are the generalist skills because see, like I say, a, a school or education institution makes a student master of one, but now you also need to be a jack of all. So while the school or the education institution makes you master of one, which is whatever specialist skill like engineering, coding, business and so on that a college teaches, how do you be a jack of all? Because today a coder doesn't just have to code, also has to think like an entrepreneur also has to collaborate with a graphic designer. A graphic designer also has to understand business trends to create design that aligns to consumer preferences, something that a designer otherwise would not learn. Now, what we do, of course, we're talking to school principals and school students. So we've kind of tempered down the story of the simulation. So either it could be a social enterprise where the student is working in, where they are trying to uh, you know, push for a cause, raise sponsorships, manage an event, all in a simulation. And that's how they learn. So what we essentially do is we'll partner with you. We'll uh, understand your academic calendar. And between 30 to 60 minutes a week over the period of one year, we will make them do, we'll make them work in an imaginary startup. And as they are working, they will be learning. And as they are learning, a foundation is laid so that when they enter college and when they enter the workplace, they're already ready. And it's more important for you guys because the, the student that you're teaching now is going to enter the workplace five to seven, eight years from now. So imagine the depth of foundation and the greater head start that they will receive. So without taking much of your time, I would like to partner with you, Ignited Intellectuals and Experience Skills Lab, would like to partner with each one of you so that we can today lay the foundation of building a future ready workforce of smart generalists or jack of alls for the country. Because it's not just for a student's individual life. Today, the student will join a company, the company contributes to the economy. So it's a collect, it, there's a collective cyclical impact of students applying, relying more on their intelligence rather than just knowledge. Because to conclude, I would like to say that how people think will matter much more than just what they know. And that's what Workverse and Ignited Intellectuals would like to partner with you to achieve. And uh, we'll be in touch with you for more information. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Samyak and Nikhil. I believe that we all had a wonderful day today. I hope that everyone is taking something from this day one of the conclave. We meet tomorrow again with an exciting session on gamification. Thank you so much. I request you all to proceed towards the high tea. But before that, we'll have a group photograph. And after the high tea, we'll have a campus tour. Thank you so much. We meet tomorrow again at 9.30. Thank you. I also request all the participants to check out tomorrow from your hotel and come to the campus so that you can depart to your destinations from here. Thank you.